I'd like to switch over to the AI part of it and how Siri Technologies and Elliot is involved with analyzing this data because UMED's output product is the information, but right. you know, how do we get that information? So Elliot, what can you tell us about the AI? Right, okay, so there are a lot of aspects. So of course, you know, there are a lot of factors that influence the the price of a various of various cryptocurrencies you know the idea of having a decentralized system that's one you know that's one source of what gives it value but then we want to how do we make portfolio decisions based off of that you know there are a lot of factors that go into what makes the value higher or lower and essentially we want to look at all those different values and then figure out how to you know how they're correlated what kind of hidden patterns are 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 in those um are in those variables for example let's say you know um if the transact the number of transactions all of a sudden spikes that's going to increase the value of the currency and of course the ai will will be able to pick up on that saying okay historically speaking when we've had a huge jump in transactions the price of let's say bitcoin went up considerably um if you actually look back uh, on Bitcoin right before April 1st, like the le days leading up to it, there was a huge spike in uh, number of transactions on, uh, you can find this data publicly. And then sure enough, the price went up and historically this has more or less been the trend. Our AI will be able to pick up on that trend and many other trends and sort of figure out which ones are important now, which ones are less important. And essentially it will shift, it will take into account not only those different variables, but how much each one is influencing the price. And based off of that, it'll make a prediction saying, this is how much the price should you know, go up or down um, within some degree of error, of course. And using that, people will be able to make the smart portfolio decisions based off that information. Because there's just, there's just so much data out there. How do we make sense of that data? It's too much for one person to sort of look at all these graphs and just make sense what's important now, what's going to be important later. Uh, how do we value short-term information versus long-term information? There are just too many factors for the individual to consistently make good portfolio decisions off of. That's where the AI part of it comes in. Okay. In, okay. in, a, in, in a nutshell. Okay. Okay. So um, I want to bounce. Um, I want to ask you another question, Elliot, but I want to bounce something that Umed said earlier. And basically this, this market is so nascent and um, it doesn't seem like, you know, when you, when you're on Twitter, you have a lot of technical analyst gurus and you have a lot of gurus in this space that will tell you the direction of, of certain crypto projects. Um, a majority of them are wrong. Um, and I guess some are right, but some are probably right by, by, by chance and others maybe are just, they, they see something that the rest of the population doesn't see. So like moving, moving forward with analytics, how is this going to be, because this market is all over the place and what exactly, what ratios, what numbers, what X variable are you looking for, um, to to present project to present solutions to financial institutions that are looking to make investments within the crypto space because now i i don't see major banks or major companies getting into blockchain because uh, the, the space doesn't really make sense now um as far as price and what exactly moves the price up and down if if i'm making any sense what are you looking for from an ai perspective Right, of course. This is a, this is definitely a very great question, and it, it is nascent. And just like just like you said, there's not. It's it really hard to determine what factors are most significant. There are a lot. We know there are a lot of factors to consider. There's a lot of data out there, and so that relates to Bitcoin. You know, like you said, how, the number of transactions, the volume, the cost of transactions. Um, you know, how big the blockchain is. Uh, just various social media, social media sentiment, and many other factors. The idea is that each of these factors relates to the cryptocurrency space in some way. We as humans don't necessarily know exactly to what degree that that influences the price. Maybe the price is influenced in the short term, but not the long term. How long does it is it influenced for? And all we have all this data coming in. What do we do with that data? We don't essentially know what to do with that data, so we program an AI to do it for us. And so we what we, what we do is. We make it easier on ourselves because through in AI there are two two well not just two but two, there are several ways so several branches of AI that are relevant here and one of them is unsupervised learning and this is the idea where you have a bunch of data and you as an engineer or a human don't really know what you're looking for so you have an AI sort of pick up on trends that you may not necessarily have thought to program for and so the idea is we take in all this data we don't really know what we're looking for per se and yet we're still able to find some patterns and structure within the data we're, give, we're, we're given even if we have no idea what how this would have possibly correlated before and so like like you were saying some of the key variables we can have like so again transaction cost is one transaction volume is another one uh 
social media sentiment, uh, let's see, b various blockchain statistics, and then you know anything else we can think of, anything that relates to the cryptocurrency of interest in some way, we can then we can then use the AI to to look at all this data and then find hidden patterns within that data and the output to the user saying, look, this is when this happens, this also tends to happen, um, and it, it, it sort of figures it out for us, even though we don't we don't know what to look for per se. That's the that's the beauty of it. We don't because it is so new. We don't really know. Exactly. We can't say with full confidence that this factor is more significant than this one. How do we quantify better? There are a lot of there's a lot of vagueness in, in, in this. So the AI sort of helps us move past the vagueness and give us some useful information to make decisions off of. In terms of uh, companies and let's say let's say focus on portfolio returns for a little bit. So let's say we have a portfolio that has you know Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, so you know and, 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 and whatnot. So so what we can do is if we have you know, a portfolio with various cryptocurrency assets, we can sort of also look at the correlation between the, the, the two assets. Like, you know, when one goes up, what happens to the other one? So aside from all the different individual statistics that I mentioned on the for the individual cryptocurrency, like, you know, transaction cost, transaction volume. So the idea is we take into account the correlations of the various cryptocurrencies to, let's say, traditional stocks, the the various um, the various data out there for each individual cryptocurrency, and we sort of analyze it all together uh, to 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 be able to understand where the portfolio is going. And we just we give you know common statistics like the the the, the basic like expected portfolio returns and standard deviation. That's more in our um, you know for basic investors. And then we have more advanced investment analytics for the more seasoned investors. People. What, what, Whatever a, a more seasoned investor, or professional investor would look for, like a CFA working in you know in portfolios, they would look for certain metrics. We prov we provide those metrics on cryptocurrency through the use of AI, and then and any and also all other relevant information. For example, when you consider let's say fiat currency, we're not interested let's say in trend in, in you know in in blockchain statistics. It's not relevant to fiat currencies. So how does how do non traditional factors in the price play a role in the expected return of portfolio we include all, all we, we're going to include all all, all of those features and so in terms of making sense of the making sense of the value well the idea is that through all this data uh, through all this data crunching and all this you know all those various computations we're able to find hidden patterns that we did not look for and these hidden patterns can make us can help us make better educated guesses on where the individual portfolio is going, where not, not just the portfolio, but the individual cryptocurrencies themselves are going as well. So there's a lot of information and the investors can pick and choose. The beauty of it is that they can pick and choose what they want to focus on. Maybe they just want to invest in one stock and, 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 fo and focus on that one stock. Maybe they want to have an assortment of different cryptocurrencies. Maybe they want to have a mixed portfolio. And by that, I mean a mix of traditional assets with crypto assets. How do an, an investor will have all the tools at their disposal to make decisions that are appropriate to them based on based on based on the AI. And so you know we use some of the we use various you know algorithms to, to, to do this some proprietary and some of them are a proprietary application and more standard ones. And through the combination of those two we we are confidently able to produce useful information that will help the investors on average make better returns. You know that's really interesting because um so I'm assuming that the bigger data set you have <clears throat> or the more time you have to input into the AI, the more accurate the output's going to be. Can you actually tell the AI and just say, all right, software, tell me, you know, six months from now, where should this cryptocurrency be based off of all the data we've collected so far? Is it right? Sure, I can definitely speak to that. So definitely, uh, in, in the rule of thumb for AI is the more training data you have, the better. The better uh, the prediction should be. Uh, of course, you want to when you're training it, you want to be able to test it off something. So the historical, because there's so much historical data for let's say Bitcoin and Ethereum, let's say we want to train it on four years of data. We want to test it on the last you know two years of data, and then you can the, the previous four years will be able to provide the AI with enough information to make good forecasts. In the last two years, we can test to see how well how well it forecasted versus what the data actually showed. And this is how and this is how we judge how well the model will perform uh, go, going forward. Um, that's more or less how, how 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 that works. Oh well, so it allows you to validate the model and you. Exactly. That's exactly what, in the in the AI community the way it's uh, it's the training set. It would be the first, let's say, the first four years, and the, the validation set um, is the um, is the uh, the last two years. And this is essentially where we test the data. We essentially we know what the data should look like because we have the data for those two years. We want to see what the AI predicts for those two years and compare it to the actual data. And based on how it does, we'll be able to say, oh, you know, this performed pretty well. And we feel confident it can generalize well to new unseen data. And this is you know a common a common practice for machine learning. Nice. That sounds a lot more 
usable then like on the TAs, I often see people do this A, B, C, D, E thing. And I just go, right. well, I, right. I, I see the pattern differently than what they just explained. And I'm not even a pro. And um, I'm like right 50% of the time and wrong 50% of the time. So I may as well flip a coin. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly, exactly right. So we we don't want to do that. So the idea is that for them, and what we're going to also put for our um for our models, we'll also put we'll also, we're going to do our best to f to have a model which can forecast, let's say, uh, number of transactions. So let's let's say the, the 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 user of our platform wants to know how the transaction volume for let's say Ethereum goes up in in, in the next six months. Let's say they want to focus on just that one aspect. We can then have a model which says. We think it's going to be here in, in six months, and it will show like a, a, a you know a graph which says this is where the price should be for the next six months for each day. And then the idea is, well, for the model, we'll we'll be able to quantify the degree of how confident uh, or the AI will have a metric which quantifies how good the model should be. Like if we feel very confident, the number will be much higher than if we feel lower. And basically, the investor can say, okay, this model is giving me a pretty uh you know pretty high. Uh, coefficient and it's, and it's going to say i think and I, this is not going to be basic linear regression by the way this is going to be um because I'm, I'm being somewhat vague here it's going to be more sophisticated and just it's going to be an advanced regression model it's not just linear it's um we're going to be using a uh, various um time series uh, time series forecast and from the time series forecast we'll be able to do um good predictions then we can quantify how good that prediction is and if the, if the prediction model is highly ranked then we can say with higher degree of confidence that this is more or less what the price should be if it feels more iffy the coefficient will be lower and if it feels not so certain it'll probably say you may as well fl flip a coin uh generally speaking you know, if we have a lot of historical data it should be pretty reliable or you know reliable to a certain to a certain degree and you can then say okay the price should be here plus or minus you know s s some amount or let's say the number of transactions should be here plus or minus some amount and then based on the information, you know, like I said, the investors can make whatever decisions they want to. You know, whether that's you know their own portfolios, maybe they just want to follow the stock, maybe they want to you know figure out, you know, maybe, maybe they're specifically interested in maybe the investor feels that the transaction volume is what's gonna affect the price. And they're just they're really set on that. So maybe they want to focus on just the transaction volume. They can look at that one individual statistic and then make decisions on their portfolio based off those statistics. Or alternatively, they can look at a whole bunch of different features and combine, you know, the various important the, the degree of importance of all those features to their own portfolio. And then there's, there's there's a lot of there's a it's it's fun because there's a, a huge playground of information to explore and you know over time the investors will sort of choose what, what they feel most comfortable exploring um, and you know what what just gives them the better return on portfolio but there are a lot of features available so investors can sort of pick and choose what they want and then we just want to kind of want to give them a huge toolbox uh, you know of every every tool they would possibly need and they kind of just go in there and pick which tool fits their needs best. Okay. Okay. Elliot, I have a follow-up question because um, this is more of a speculative question. So from what I'm gathering, it's almost like you're trying to provide certain index values to your customers. You know, when you right. go on, when you go on like Vanguard and they show you the ETFs and the mutual funds, they give you the ROI for various different years. It works a little different in blockchain because there are different variables as well. But right. moving forward, how long do we need to take? Because I've ran linear regression models. I've ran logarithmic re regression models. I've ran exponential time series. And like the R squared value for Cardano, for example, it's just not statistically significant at, right now. And right. I just don't know how long that time window will take in order for um, for things to become right. more statistically statistically significant. Right. There's certainly very, very great questions. Um, the, the, the nice thing is that, uh, so when you use linear regression models, you're sort of, you're limited in the kind of function. Like certainly there is, there's a function which describes the, the data, like there's, if it describes the data. So the idea is let's say on some given day, you have this price for, let's say, you know, Ethereum. And the next day you have this price for Ethereum. There's, and then you have a, a whole history of that. There is an exact function which will describe the input output relationship of this, of the stock price to, to the day, essentially, it, it's exact. So the, when you're limiting yourself to a line, your forecast is not really good because you're saying that data is going to follow a line more or less, and that's just that's not realistic. And same with logarithmic; it's not really following a, lo a logarithmic uh, mo model at all. Thankfully speaking, though, so there are like for, let's let's say we take a neural network, right? Neural networks are known to be what are called universal function approximators, and the idea is that they can take any continuous function, which would be you know more or less true for modeling you know price data. Because um, you know we have an exact input output relationship, and you know, more or less, you know, is it's 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 not bumpy or or jaggy, just to be you know very, um, what's the word? Uh, 
basic with it and not, 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 not being very precise. So the idea is that so we can have a continuous function model the price. The idea of a neural network uh, or any universal function approximator is they can take any continuous function and model that exactly. Um, so it doesn't have to be a line. We don't even know, we don't even need to know what kind of function we're looking for. We just need to know it's continuous, which is the power of mathematics in general. We don't, we're, we're not limited to a specific function. We're, we're essentially looking in the class of all possible functions and then finding the exact one to model the price. So when it comes to regression models, you can use a neural network to perfectly model the historical data. The problem using that approach is that even though it can model the historical data perfectly, it won't necessarily generalize well to new data. And this is called the overfitting problem. This is essentially where you do too well in the training data and it won't generalize well to new unseen data. So there, there are various tricks to reduce overfitting. And some of the proprietary algorithms that I have that actually um, don't use a neural network uh, at all are going to be able to find, well, they actually, it's, I wouldn't say they were doing it all. They use a combination of neural networks and something proprietary to address the overfitting problem. And the idea here is that it will know, so they're saying, okay, the model that we have here on the training data has a certain degree of accuracy. And then we're going to say, and this way, and we also are going to forecast its ability to generalize the new data. We see the, the model is good enough. So if, it's, if it's too perfect, it won't be able to accurately predict where, 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 the, where the next points are. But, but if it's not perfect, if, it, if, it's too, if it's linear, for example, that's not going to fit the data well either. So there's, there's, a, there's a, a trade off here. So the idea here is we want to find the best possible regression model using, um, it's not going to be a specific function. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a adaptive function more or less. It essentially takes in parameters and it, it adjusts how the function, you know, what, what, you know how, how it uh, moves up and down and, and all the shifts it's going to do. And based on those shifts, the regression model will be some function we don't know, but it will be able to describe the data well and forecast the new data. So the R squared value would be more statistically significant there. And that's sort of the best we can do because there is uh, there is no way, uh, to my knowledge, to have a perfect reg regression model. It's obviously an ongoing field of research, but certainly this is a better way to do it. Don't limit yourself to one individual function. Try to find, try to look for a class of functions, and then find a specific function in that class to model the function you to to model a relationship that you want to model. So, and, and some of my training that I did, that I did um, a, a, for my PhD studies before, because I, I was doing my PhD, and then I essentially um, took, a, I guess, a hiatus to work on Serietech. The, the, the story is, it's kind of, you know, a, a fun story. So I was taking a machine learning class, and then during that time, I had the prototype for some of these algorithms developed. And I thought to myself, well, I could publish a paper on it, or I can try to make some money off of it. And so then I decided, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I said I'm going to just, I think, I, I don't want someone else to make money off my idea. So I said, okay, I'll work on this now for a little bit, and then eventually come back and finish my studies. But one of the fields I was interested in was uh, Analysis. Analysis is sort of um, built off a of calculus, and this is sort of like you know, uh, it essentially took all those ideas and generalized them uh, further. And one of the most important powers of analysis is the idea that you can abstract a lot of things. For example, let's say the idea of what functions you want to look for. And so we're not going to we're not interested in specific functions. We're interested in the classes of functions that do something useful. And the regression models are no different. And we can use these models to then forecast the prices. And so this sort of it was a, my ideas were inspired by this training um, to be able to do these re regression models. Um, and, then, and then using that, we're able to predict stock, and this can be applied to stock price, can be applied to any any variable of interest that is relevant to the blockchain, relevant to cryptocurrency, can be analyzed in this way. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fascinating, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. fascinating. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So, yeah. and I think it's perfect that you took a hiatus and you're, awesome. you're, you're going towards your own company and um, making sure that you profit as much as possible in this new space because timing is a uh, critical Everything. component yet. So yeah, by the time you finish your PhD program, who knows, you know, like we, um, the cryptocurrency space may have already mooned and it's oversaturated. So um, we're probably a long way away from that, but PhD programs also take a long time. So yeah.